guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Kingdoms Candy Monsters by Zamiliel. It plays two to five players, takes about 30 to 60 minutes to play, and it's for ages 12 and up in the game Kingdoms Candy Monsters. You're basically going to be an overlord sending your minions of monsters into the candy kingdom to steal the white sugar and basically feed them and uh, sur surpass the amount of monsters you currently have to a larger extent, getting larger armies of monsters monsters. The gameplay is kind of like Splendor with a little bit of tableau management. You're utilizing your monsters to gain these certain candies by feeding them sugar and spending sugar to buy skills. These skills can go under the monster to make them more powerful or be used separately to make monsters cheaper. There's events that are going to be taking place at the end of every round and you might have to feed your monsters with these black cards here or do some kind of special event with these guys here. After the fourth event triggers where you have to feed the monsters, the game is going to end. The player with the most points at the end of the game is the winner of the Kingdom's Candy Monsters. Let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you what comes in the game, show you how to play, and then we'll give my review. So here we have Kingdom's Candy Monsters all set up and ready to play for two players. And of course, plays up to five, but the setup is the same regardless of the number of players other than the fact that each player will get a different imp. They're going to get a sweet K, then it's going to start at two currency, which is two sugars every turn. And they're going to get a player action or player aid card that will have a front and a back side to it that will tell you what symbols do and what they mean and then how you can gain additional sugar as well as candy throughout the game on the beginning of your turn or whenever you purchase something. Each player is also going to start with five sugar to begin with and the sugar are these white cubes here. You've got the larger white ones which are basically just larger sugar. They're going to count as five or ten however you want to do that. And then you have black sugar which is basically just negative points for not being able to feed your monsters or other reasons. These little tokens here are once a game abilities. Some of the monsters in the decks here are going to have once again abilities that you'll utilize these tokens symbolize that you have done those abilities and then you have candies candies are your basic go-to victory points throughout the game ones and fives other thing you need to know about is there's an event deck here there's the monster deck and then there's the ability deck here Ability deck is pretty simple. You're gonna take the t you're gonna take the ten different abilities and put them on the bottom of the deck. Shuffle the rest up and put them on top. The monsters are just simply shuffled up and dealt out three for each of these sets here. And then the these ones here. These are the uh, end of round uh, things that are gonna occur, like events. The events are interesting. Every three cards, every every two cards, you're gonna put one of these black ones in, and these black ones are basically the feeding cards. You're gonna feed your monsters. So for each two, we're gonna add one. So every three cards will have one of these cards. Shuffle each of them individually, and then stack them on top of each other to formulate a set of I'm guessing what three, six, nine, twelve cards, which is basically the entirety of the game. The game will end once the final black candy card feeding card comes out. After you've got your uh, stack of events, three monsters out, three abilities out, and everybody has their tableau here, choose a player to go first, give them the first player marker, and then they can go ahead and begin the game. That's pretty much the entire setup for the game. It plays in this little area right here. And let's go ahead now and just go ahead and show you a couple rounds or a couple turns of the game, how it functions and how you can utilize all of the cards in the game. And then we'll come up and we'll do the review thing. Okay, so here's our two player game of Kingdoms Candy Monsters. and. And it's just ready to go. We'll start with this player as the first player. They get this marker here. And the reason why they have this marker is not only to show you that you're the first player, but also after the round ends, which is after everybody takes a turn, you're simply going to pass this to the next player and do what it says on the card, which is to remove one of these cards from the kingdom and replace it with a new card. On your turn, you get to do one of three actions. You can buy an ability, which are these guys here. You can buy a monster, which are these ones here, or you can collect sugar. And in general, you're gonna collect five. However, you can collect more when you get certain abilities and or monsters that will give you the ability to gain more sugar. Uh, before you do that on your turn though, you're going to actually collect sugar. And the way you collect sugar is you're going to look at all of their beginning of turn abilities at the beginning of your turn, which has these little exclamation marks. And you're gonna collect any of those things. And in general, at the very start, you're gonna get two sugar, add it to your pile here. This is your currency for the game. You'll be utilizing the sugar to buy abilities and to buy monsters, as well as on the occasion, you'll be utilizing them for these certain abilities that will let you trade them out for maybe victory points or other useful things throughout the game. Then, now that you've collected any of your beginning of turn things, you're going to go ahead and take one of the three actions. And like I said before, you can collect five sugar, you can go ahead and buy one of these or buy one of these. The cost for abilities is listed on the top left-hand corner of the cards. The cost for monster is also listed on the top left-hand corner. The abilities have two functions. The first function is if you choose to buy an ability, so we'll just go ahead and start by doing that. I'll take and spend 
uh, four of these sugars, which will let me buy this ability. And then I can go ahead and do one of two things. I can either A, let's move these a little to the side. I can place this under any of my monsters, just like that. And that is going to give me this specific ability. And that is going to actually give me an additional sugar every turn as long as I have this monster. So these abilities will trigger based on what it says down here. These are This says beginning of the turn. This one says whenever you buy an ability, whenever you buy a monster, whenever you collect sugar, and during the black candy event, which is of course this card here. If you don't want to tuck the ability, then you can go ahead and simply place it away from your monsters, but still in your area. And you're going to utilize it for this area up here. The numbers inside the candy represent the amount of points you're going to get at the end of the game. So for instance, here, this is going to be one point and one more point, which is two. And this one here is three points. Having these out in front of you is going to reduce the cost of monsters that you buy based on the type of the monster by one for each type of that candy you have. So in this case, you have one blue candy, which means if you buy this monster on your next turn, it will cost you one less from five, which would be four. If I happen to have both of these, that's two blue candy, which means this will cost three as opposed to five. And that is how that works. You're trying to collect multiple sets as well as um, you're trying to collect multiple points on these cards here if you want to buy it this way. And you can just simply stack them just like this as you continue to buy them because you're not going to be worrying about these specific abilities unless they're tucked. So that's the two different ways you can use abilities, either tucking them under a monster of your choice, or you can set them aside and use them for the benefit here. Some of them, uh, a, a lot of these things here have some uses too. So for instance, when you have one of each of these type of candy here, whenever you buy a monster, uh, 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 you're going to have to gain one candy. So for uh, one of each of your of the colors of the candies, you get one of these here. One of each of the yeah, colors here, you're going to get one of those here. And the same will be said for this as well. Uh, monsters work similarly, but a little different. So when you buy a monster, so for instance, if I didn't spend the four to buy this here, I can instead spend to buy one of these guys here. Uh, and uh, let's see, this one's gonna cost seven, this one's gonna cost four, and this will cost five. So let's go ahead and buy this big guy here, four, five, six, and seven. That's all of my sugar. And I can buy this guy, and you're gonna just simply place it next to the rest of your monsters. If you look on this guy here, it's going to have a cost for sugar as far as when you want to feed it. And during the feeding phase, if you don't have that sugar, it'll cost you negative points unless you dismiss the monster. This is also additionally victory points. And then you'll get this ability throughout the entire game, which says, if you look at the back side of your card or here, it says whenever you buy an ability, um, when, it, when you buy a candy ability, gain three uh, sugar. So that can be very useful throughout the game as you hold this guy. So he's worth three points and has this pretty pretty powerful ability, which will also allow you to stick these things under the, that guy as well. So you're going to continue to do some tableau management and gaining new monsters. However, remember that your imp is going to cost one candy per monster you have. So he's going to get more expensive as time goes on. So those are the two main options, of course, other than buying sugar. In this case, however, I think the best ability for me is to simply go ahead and buy this one here for four, because that's going to give me more sugar throughout the entire game. And since it's pretty new, that's what I want to do. The next thing is whenever you buy a card, you're going to simply flip over the top card of the deck and place it down. This turn is now over, so it will go to the next player in turn order, going clockwise, and they will get to do the same thing. They're going to get to gain two little sugars here, and then they're going to go ahead and buy one of the things here, gain more sugar. And in this case, we'll go ahead and buy this one for two, putting this under the card, which says at the beginning of the turn, if you spend one sugar, you can gain one victory point or one candy. It's just pretty useful. You'll start gaining points rather quickly. Then after that, everybody's taken one of the actions and ended their turn, then you're going to trigger an event. So this is the event deck here, which each has their individual sets of three. You're gonna go ahead and flip over one of these and do whatever it says. This one here is a market and says, players may discard one monster they control and gain three victory points or three candies. And for each player that does that, they'll gain that. Then this will be left here. And because the reason why you do that is because that means that in the next two cards, this one or this one is going to be a black candy. After that, this first player marker will switch, and this player will get to choose one card from the kingdom, remove it from the game, and put out a new card. And then the turns will continue, and this player is going to start. Uh, after, like I said, the only thing you need to know about now is once this happens, so this will be on the third round of the game, this is going to trigger the feeding session, and everybody's going to have to feed their monsters. And in this case, you have to feed him one candy, 
and you end up feed one, him one candy. If you didn't, if you couldn't afford them, you could remove them or add black candies, which are basically negative points. Additionally, these little tokens here are worth one apiece as well if you choose to utilize them like that. And that is pretty much the entire idea of the game. Once you get to the fourth one of these feeding sessions, the game is going to end, and you're going to tally points equal to all of the candies in the top left, right hand corner, all of these candies here and their numbers. There's certain monsters that will give you certain effects, will give you bonuses. You can turn the sugars for four for one, as well as tallying up any of the candies you get as well. And whoever has the most points in Kingdom's Candy Monsters is the winner of the game. A simple to understand tableau management game with quite a complex structure to it and a lot of different options options. All right, so a couple caveats, or at least one. When you feed monsters, you can feed them candy or sugar, but you should be feeding them sugar first and foremost, and then if not, you can feed them either the candy or you can go ahead and take the negative points black cubes. The choice is yours, and it's going to depend in certain situations which you're going to do, but in general, sugar is always the first thing. It's the currency of the game. Use the currency as much as you possibly can to gain as much benefit and to reduce the negative effects that might befall you. Um, otherwise, the game itself is very similar to games like Splendor, in which you're trying to gather more and more in your tableau to make things easier, make things cheaper, and give yourself a head start uh, among your competition. You want to gain as much sugar as possible. Gathering sets is going to do that for you. Certain monsters, if you get the say, if you get multiple types of them, they're going to give you more candy at the beginning of every round, as well as if you have different types, that's going to give you um, sugar as well. So based on how you gather the monsters is important. Gathering abilities probably first is, is a good idea. And remember, your imp feeds based on the number of monsters you have. So at the end of the game, if you have to feed again, he's only worth one point plus the number of items you've tucked under him or abilities. If he only has one or two points, maybe it's worth not feeding him if you have five monsters. It's really just going to depend on all of that. The artwork is really fun. It's really cute. And it's actually, this game is a lot more deep and a lot more complex than I thought by looking at the game, looking at the box. I was just like, oh, what am I getting? Is it going to be kind of like a kid's game? And this is actually not, it, it, it plays like a family game. It's fairly simple to understand. And you're going to have a ton of choices in the game. Now, obviously, there's only six, but the way you utilize them is going to matter as well. How you choose to tuck, whether you choose to gather a monster, uh, which types of monster you want to gather and why, based on the different colors there and how many points they're worth. There's multiple ways to try and win the game, whether you just want to go for a big point spread, whether you want to try and gather candies throughout the entire game, as well as, of course, keeping enough sugar to feed all of your monsters. There's a lot of little complexities to it. So... Quality of artwork is really cute, really fun, very, very family friendly little monsters trying to eat up the sugar in the kingdom. And then, of course, the complexity can range from rather easy to understand and easy and simple to play. But, of course, uh, the more you play, the better you're definitely going to get at games like this, similar to the games like Splendor, as you're kind of playing them. I think uh, Cities does that as well. They have uh, a lot of games that kind of remind me of this game, but this game has some individual features, obviously, because you're expanding different types of cards into your tableau. The only one or two things i got to say about it for negative feedback or maybe just like feedback in general is one is you're never always going to get to do what you want in the game fully or most likely there's always things that you wish you could have done because, but the game is going to end probably before you can do that some people like that aspect of the game some people probably won't and then of course the other thing is as you're playing the game you have to really keep track of what you want to gather how you want to gather it and what your opponents are going to go for because it really makes a difference there's only a certain amount of cards that are available to you and that's likely to change in a larger player game so never expect to get what you want on your turn with more players being in the game. Overall, this was above and beyond what I expected from the game. I really enjoyed this. We played it multiple times, and each time I enjoyed it more because I got to see new interesting interactions with it. The deck of event cards, I'd like to see more of them added as well because these were a lot of fun. Of course, the, they all will work, and you'll be able to shuffle them up in different ways, but more is always better for events like this. I like making the game feel even more different each time you play it. And one other thing, too, would be nice, which Grant might not agree or disagree with me. I like the idea of player and a main board for the game. We both agreed that a main board would be really cool to show off the shops and whatnot and the events that come out as well as a place to put the sugar and all that. 
Uh, but we disagreed on the game board. I thought that a player board. I thought a player board would be nice, and he said it didn't really matter. And I guess it technically doesn't. I just like that aspect of it. But overall, it doesn't really necessarily need it either. Maybe it's some kind of stretch goal or something. I just kind of like that idea. Overall, I really, really enjoyed this game. This is one that's going to see play for family gamers as well as strategic people who enjoy games like, 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 like Splendor and like Tableau management games. It has quite a bit of appeal, quite a bit of strategy. And actually, the fact that you can continue playing and getting better and better at it is going to be something that people are going to wind, wind up playing more and more. So overall, enjoyable game. Definitely check out down below in the link in the description, Kingdoms Candy Monsters. I don't know why, the name is hard to say. Kingdoms Candy Monsters. The plurals in certain areas. I don't know. All right, thanks for watching. Outro. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out our videos too on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Hit that bell notification button right there to see more videos. We're creating a lot more walkthrough content, top fives, and all that good stuff as well for you guys who like longer content, not just reviews. Also, go ahead and check our website, unfilteredgamer.com. That's a blog post, giveaway kit, Kickstarter list, and more. We're giving away the game. We're giving away at Elementos. Elementos is on our, on our giveaway page, as well as checking out our live stream every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST, which is actually today, which is video is likely going to come out today. And if you're interested, you can go ahead and come and join us at 7.30 p.m. PST on Facebook, Unfiltered Gamer. We give away games. We play a ton of games just like the one you see here every week. It's a lot of fun. Join the community and join us on Patreon. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. And as always, I look forward to invading a kingdom full of candy, utilizing my monster army with you next time.